limit as x approaches 0 from the left of 1 over x plus 1 over absolute value of x. Now whenever you see two things being added together in a limit problem, there's a temptation to apply one of the one of the uh, limit rules which says that you can separate it out. So just in general if you have the limit of f of x plus g of x and it's the limit of that whole thing you could break that up into limit of f of x plus limit of g of x. And normally that's a great way to simplify a problem. But the issue here is that as x goes to 0, what's 1 over 0? Well, that's undefined, right? Um, or at, Well, it's undefined, but as x goes to 0, you would say that 1 over 0 would become infinitely large, right? So the limit does not exist. And the same is the case here. As x approaches 0, 1 over a number that's diminishingly small is going to be infinitely large. So both both of these individual components as x goes to 0 are going to have infinite um, limits. So we actually have to take them together. It's going to be in our best interest here to keep this as one as one uh, expression. So let's graph these and get a little idea of what uh, what these two things look like if we were to sketch it out. And I'm going to put them on the same graph. Hopefully that doesn't cause too much confusion. But first we have 1 over x, right? And if you recall, that has this general shape. It's asymptotic to the y-axis and the x-axis. And it also exists in the third quadrant as well. And it's symmetrical. And then 1 over absolute value of x, when x is positive, it has the exact same shape. It's actually overlaid right here. It literally is the same graph. But when x is negative, it takes the absolute value. So it actually comes over here. That's not really what I want. So this, this guy over here is 1 over x. And this guy down here is also part of 1 over x. And this up here is 1 over absolute value of x. OK. And now they want to know the limit as x approaches 0 from the left. So we really want to come from the negative numbers. We want to approach 0, approach the x value of 0 from the left. So we're not particularly interested in what's going on in the first quadrant. We're interested in what's going on in the second quadrant and the third. And we can confirm, by the way, by looking at each of these functions, what is this, what is the 1 over x function approach as we approach 0 from the left? It goes to negative infinity, right? This thing is going lower and lower and lower. Presumably the closer we get to 0, the lower it'll get. So that's going to negative infinity. And 1 over absolute value of x as we get closer and closer to 0, follow this curve along, is going to infinity. So that's kind of what we were saying before when we were going to break it up. But let's notice what happens if we pick an arbitrary point here on the graph of 1 over absolute value of x and on the graph of 1 over x. So suppose we choose this point. Um, and we can even pick a number, right? We could pick um, x equals negative 2. Let's make this point negative 2. Then what would be the value of 1 over x plus 1 over absolute value of x? Well, let's make that substitution. 1 over x, what's the corresponding y value here? Corresponding y value here would be 1 over negative 2, right? So basically negative 1 half. And what about 1 over absolute value of x? That would be up here. Its corresponding y value would be 1 over absolute value of negative 2, which is 1 half. So what's 1 over negative 2, negative 1 half, plus 1 half? Well, it would be 0, right? And that makes sense because the distance that this point is from the x-axis is the same as the distance that this point is from the x-axis. So even though they're both getting further and further from the x-axis, their magnitude, their distance from it, is the same in opposite directions. One's positive, one's negative. So it actually cancels out and goes to 0. 
and we want to see what happens as we choose points that get closer and closer to zero. So let's choose another point. If we choose x equals 1, then the corresponding y value on that curve will be there, and the corresponding y value on the bottom curve will be here. So 1 over negative 1 by the way, we're choosing x equals negative 1, not 1. 1 over negative 1 plus 1 over the absolute value of negative 1 is negative 1 plus 1, which is 0. So now we're even further from the x-axis, and yet, because one's positive and one's negative and they have the same magnitude, it's still 0. And this trend is going to continue, and you can choose more points and prove it, but I'm pretty much satisfied that as we choose values of x that are still negative, right, because we're still approaching zero from the left, but that are closer and closer to zero, even though this is going to become infinitely large, that's the top graph, one over, sorry, uh, this one's going to become infinitely large, one over absolute value of x, and the bottom graph is going to become infinitely small, their sum will always be zero. So we can say with confidence that this limit is zero.